when you're starting up a business, every single person who you've ever had friends or relations or anything like that is going to ask you a couple questions. Most of the time they're going to ask you, why would you ever do that? Are you sure that's going to work? You've got a regular job that will pay you well. What about your retirement? All these things. Everybody continually asks you, what if you fail? And the weirdest thing is that the bank will do it everywhere else. Well, but nobody ever asks you, what if you're a success? And if you're a success, are you prepared to work 150 hours a week, see your personal life and your personal pieces fall apart or disappear for a while and come back? All of those things end up being something that if you don't ask yourself about the successful side of things, then you're just going to end up being doomed to miss out on how awesome it is. When I was at Independent doing a, uh, a vendor day, I got approached about the idea of do you cater and you're a new guy so you say yes to everything because who knows when the next thing's coming along and that ended up being that I put a quote and a bid in for the Premier's Conference and that was pretty intense. The catering, once I did that one, that snowballed into I was at that event, can you do this one? That went into, hey, Will and Kate are coming, can you cook the food for Will and Kate? That went into, hey, we're getting married, can you do 200 person wedding? I was actually physically at the KDCC from 5 a.m. until midnight, all the way through that. And it was sadistically invigorating, let's say. <laughs> I was at the absolute, I couldn't do any more. Running full tilt, making myself sick, not not eating well, losing weight, doing all that kind of stuff. And it was mentally great, but not physically. Physically, it took a little bit of a toll. I see very clearly in my emotions when I'm in a really rough headspace, I can't cook worse shit. It's really bad. <laughs> Bread doesn't rise, cookies fall apart, uh, soup tastes boring and bland. But when I'm in a good headspace, I feel great. My headspace gets improved the second that I get to use something really amazing, something territory grown, something when an apple smells like an apple versus when a strawberry smells like an apple. Take a picture, promote this glorious life, look how happy I am because I'm an entrepreneur, isn't everything wonderful? And you go, yeah, I know what you actually did to get there. But if you can hold on and remember those nice warming times where somebody said to you, this was amazing, this meant so much. You really respected what we hoped for. You really respected us. That's pretty much the, that's the thing that gets you through. Because otherwise you're just sitting there going, I made 20 bucks. And sure, you know, like making, making food for 200 people and you know, you get a check for, let's just say it's, it's a hundred grand. You go, man, that was amazing. But then there's the other side where they say, I will give you 30 grand. And you go, oh my God, really? That sounds like a lot of money. But not when you pay $7 per dozen for eggs, $20 a pound for beef, this for that, that for that. You look at it and you go, I've, I've got nothing. But a check mark, and those check marks aren't worth your time. They're not. 